we do, whatever work we do, whatever regular task we do, everything is what we call as process. Okay. Uh, so this process can be of different things. Like for example, uh, it can be a inbuilt process. It can be a process that is defined by us. It can be a process which is defined by some other programs. Okay. It depends on the things, how the process is going to do. Okay. Uh, just I'll show you one simple animated video. Okay. Uh, you'll be able to understand how the process is going to be done. Just I'll uh, share the screen by sharing the animated video. Yeah, all are able to see the video, right? The phone. Uh, my voice is clear, audible to all. Yes, yes sir. Okay, thanks. Somebody was sure. testing me, voice is not clear. Fine. Let's see the video. Yes, I'm sure that I'll explain the video. If you have observed here exactly, uh, there are three different processes. Okay, there are three different processes. One is red, green, and yellow. Okay, there are, we have three different processes. Red process, just uh, to identify the colors, there are different uh, colors: red, green, and yellow. So here, what we have is we have a waiting room here, ready waiting room. So whatever works a uh, computer is given. It will execute in the waiting order. That's the first thing that we have to remember. Second thing is, this is what we call it as running. Running in the sense, what are the process which is executing, which will be in the, uh, uh, what we call as the running process. Can call. Then we are, yeah, the down we have something like waiting room. I hope everybody is able to see the screen, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, so there is a waiting room. In waiting room also, we have something like uh, <coughs> first in, first out queue. Okay, in ready also, we have a waiting room. And here also, uh, we have a waiting room. And if you can observe various things here, there is a new process which has been created. First, it will be admitted. It is a ready room. From ready room, it will go to the operating system. It will go to the dispatch section. Then it will be running the process. If any priority process has come, 
if any higher priority process has come, whatever process which is running here will be sent to the this waiting room. Then the priority process which is having high priority will be sent to this. Once it has done, again it will be terminated. Or we also have something called as interrupt. Interrupt is nothing but uh, to stop a process abnormally, to stop the process and uh, giving a chance for other process to work. Okay, you want to see the video once again? I you think you'll be able to understand a better way if you see the second time. See it again. See, green process is going to be executed. It is running. Green process is getting run. Then we have another process, red color process as well. Then it is in the ready room. Then already there is a green process that is getting interrupted because it's a process which has to be red process. Now red process will move to the office. Now it is getting interrupted. Then one more process is getting created. Hello process. Now as the process is getting executed, it requires input output operation. So it is going to the input output operation. Even waiting, input output waiting group. Then it is waiting in the queue. As I said, when the process is ending, green process is not waiting. Green process is not waiting. Then this red process is moving again to the ready. Then when green process completed task, it is moving out. Then yellow process which is in the next is on the Then we have only one process red color which is going to occupy the operating system. And it is going to execute. Once it has executed, it is also going to be done. Are you prepared to follow this? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Okay, easy to understand this kind of things. Videos, Stop. what happened? We got the videos. Why if so many videos are off again? Every time you want me to remind me, put the videos on, put the videos on, put the videos on. Hmm? They're not school kids, right? Okay. Last shaker. Fine, okay. So this is how the process will be executing one after the other. So when these processes are getting executed, first thing what it has to do is, uh, it has to monitor which process has to be executed, which process has to be kept in queue, ready queue, which process has to be given higher priority, which process require input output operations. All these things are going to be taken control by operating system. Okay, that is the main rule for operating system about the process management. Okay, ma? able to follow this? Yes, sir. Fine, yes, sir. Okay, good. Yeah, uh, sorry for the interruption. Fine, okay. So, uh, uh, I'll, I'll just one more, play one more animated video. Uh, like how the processes are getting executed. 
Okay, just follow this video also. Tutorial. We should move on to the process manager and look at how the processor and its manager work to process the jobs being passed through to memory. It is important to understand that processors vary in performance, speed, and bandwidth, so results vary from machine to machine. But there are some factors to appreciate. The clock speed refers to the speed at which the processor can execute instructions. So, the quicker the clock speed, the more cycles are run, and essentially, the more instructions are carried out. Do not always be fooled, though. The efficiency of the processor's architecture determines how much work the processor actually does. The bandwidth determines how much information can be processed in one instruction. The wider the bandwidth, the more that can be fitted on and sent. Think of it as a motorway. The wider the road, the more cars, or in this case, instructions, can be run at the same time. The processor has its own version of memory, also known as cache, that exists on the die of a processor. Because it has less time to travel, it is usually checked first before calling in a page from the RAM. Cache can be accessed between 5 to 10 times faster than accessing the RAM. A process scheduler is in charge of making efficient use of the physical processor. There are two parts to this. One is the job scheduler, and the other is the process scheduler, taking note that a job can consist of many processes. It can juggle many jobs. A process can be in five different states. Hold, ready, run, wait, and finish. Hold is controlled by the job scheduler, and as the name suggests, it is holding the job until it has permission to run. Think of a car race. You cannot start the engine until the starting signal has been called. Now, when your engine is on, you are in a ready state. The ready state is a signal to continue with the process. When the car is ready to proceed, it is in a running state. In our case, it is currently processing the job. Throughout this time of running, there may be a concern of performance, so a check with the team is made to ensure it is okay to start running again, returning to a ready state. If it is okay to run again, it goes back into a running state. But what if there is an engine failure? In that case, an I.O. request page fault is presented and the car is put in a waiting state until it has found the correct resource or part so that it can continue to run. This will loop constantly until the process has either completed or failed, where it is then put into a finishing state. Each process has a life cycle. The process control block is used as an identifier and contains basic information about the job. What is it doing? Where is it going? How much processing has it currently done? And most importantly, how much it has spent in using resources. With the use of a process control block, we can place those in the correct queues. Think of the queue as a linked list of PCB. Okay, <coughs> follow this mark, everybody. Are you able to understand this video? Yeah, there's an explanation yes. about. Yes, yeah. sir. There's an explanation about how the process is going to execute. Okay, so as a uh, if both the previous videos, both the two videos can be linked actually. Three processes are running. There also there were three processes. Here also there were three processes. <coughs> when they are getting executed, if one process fails, either it will be repaired or if it is not able to be repaired, it will be failed. It will be terminated. If it is successful also it will be terminated. If it is failed also it will be abort and it will be terminated. So that is how the process is going to work in an operating system <coughs> based on the things, based on the technology, all those things it will be able to terminate. You want to see the video once again or it's okay? Sir? You want to uh, watch the video, second video once again or it's okay?
all are able sir to... i have a doubt yes ma'am tell me sir what type of a problem that uh, does, does the process can get it can be any problem suppose i am executing a program when i am executing program suppose there might be error related to uh, devices like suppose i want to access a, a particular input device or output device that might not be available so it will get failed <coughs> next thing is uh, it can be a problem like deadlocks which will be coming across in the later part of the circuit we have a separate topic, topic called as deadlocks a uh, simple example of deadlocks we can take is uh, we'll see a traffic jam on the roads so the traffic jam is what we call as deadlocks in computer process so as the processes are running they might be a deadlock they might be a traffic jam for the process so that leads to deadlock so those kind of problems will be there in process management okay sir yeah thank you yeah anything else any doubts anybody is having Okay. Just you want me to play the video once again? Yes. No. No need. Then I'll continue the class. Anybody wants the video again to be played? You can ask me. Okay. Fine. As nobody wants, I'll just continue with this tradition. Start playing once again, sir. We shall move on to the process manager and look at how the processor and its manager work to process the jobs being passed through to memory. It is important to understand that processors vary in performance, speed, and bandwidth, so results vary from machine to machine. But there are some factors to appreciate. The clock refers to the speed at which the processor can execute instructions. So, the quicker the clock speed, the more cycles are run, and essentially, the more instructions are carried out. Do not always be fooled, though. The efficiency of the processor's architecture determines how much work the processor actually does. The bandwidth determines how much information can be processed in one instruction. The wider the bandwidth, the more that can be fitted on and sent. Think of it as a motorway. The wider the road, the more cars, or in this case, instructions, can be run at the same time. The processor has its own version of memory, also known as cache, that exists on the die of a processor. Because it has less time to travel, it is usually checked first before calling in a page from the RAM. Cache can be accessed between 5 to 10 times faster than accessing the RAM. A process scheduler is in charge of making efficient use of the physical processor. There are two parts to this. One is the job scheduler and the other is the process scheduler, taking note that a job can consist of many processes. It can juggle many jobs. A process can be in five different states. Hold, ready, run, wait, and finish. Hold is controlled by the job scheduler, and as the name suggests, it is holding the job until it has permission to run. Think of a car race. You cannot start the engine until the starting signal has been called. Now, when your engine is on, you are in a ready state. The ready state is a signal to continue with the process. When the car is ready to proceed, it is in a running state. In our case, it is currently processing the job. Throughout this time of running, there may be a concern of performance. So, a check with the team is made to ensure it is okay to start running again, returning to a ready state. If it is okay to run again, it goes back into a running state. But what if there is an engine failure? In that case, an I.O. request page fault is presented and the car is put in a waiting state until it has found the correct resource or part so that it can continue to run. This will loop constantly until the process has either completed or failed, where it is then put into a finishing state. Each process has a life cycle. 
The process control block is used as an identifier and contains basic information about the job. What is it doing? Where is it going? How much processing has it currently done? And most importantly, how much it has spent in using resources. With the use of a process control block, we can place those in the correct queues. Think of the queue as a linked list of PCB. Yeah, okay, ma. Uh, followed this. No? Any doubts on that video?